Hello, Daz community. This is Not From This World, and I want to welcome you to my tutorial series. Now, today I want to talk about something that's pretty cool. It's your tone mapping that's under your render settings. Now, tone mapping is pretty cool because you can vary the amount of light coming into your scene without messing up or changing any of your light settings. So for example, I have a scene here with Milika. She's laying on her bed, relaxing, and I have a set of spotlights and I can set these spotlights up so that they're kind of pointing in the direction that I want. We're gonna just do our typical kind of three spotlight setup here. And once we have our spotlight set up, we can go to one of our cameras and do a test. Look what, see what it looks like under eye ray. And you can see we get some nice contrast. Now, if we go to the tone map, tone map is gonna be under the render settings. And I'm just gonna select all here for a moment to show you that I am in dome and scene. So I don't have like the sun and sky or anything like that. I'm in dome and scene. And then let's go down here to tone mapping. Now, when we get to tone mapping, we have a lot of various um, options. We wanna make sure if we wanna use tone mapping that the tone mapping is enabled. So we're gonna make sure that's on. The first thing that we can look at is our exposure value. Now, these are a little different than camera settings, and I have to admit, I am not a photographer. So things like shutter speed, f-stop, ISO, I know basic things about that, but I do know in Daz that it is different, and it doesn't really work like a real camera would. When we look at our exposure value, its default is at 13. If we are to decrease or increase this, we're gonna change the amount of light that we see in our scene. Now, I've been told that the default value of 13 is kind of like a cloudy day. So if, if you're making a scene outside on a cloudy day, you're going to want to keep it at the default, I suppose. Now, as we go down, we're just gonna go down and you can see that as I go from 13 to 12, my scene is getting brighter. Even at 11, it's bleached out to the point where it's really unusable indoors. Now outside, 12 would be kind of like a shady area. And then 11, 10, 9, uh, we're going to get into twilight and darker areas. Inside, the higher I go up, the darker it gets. So Milika is in bed. Perhaps it's a little late. And if I want a darker scene like this, I can just change my exposure value. What's really cool about this is using tone mapping, you're not changing your lighting settings. You're just changing how much light is going through the camera. So that makes it pretty cool. All right, so you can kind of get the idea with the exposure value. Shutter speed does the same basic thing. It's gonna change how much light is coming in. The more I decrease it, so it's defaulted at 128. If I make it, let's say 80, it brightens the scene. So if I go from 80 to let's say 30, we're gonna see that our scene is getting bleached out. So 128 is the default. If I go below 128, we get brighter. If I go above 128, like let's do 150, we'll start getting darker. So, you know, this is just another simple way to manipulate your scene and the lighting. FSOP is also doing that same thing. The default is at eight. So if I decrease F-stop, in this case, we're gonna just change a little bit of the lighting. Let's go down to five. You can see it brightens up. If I go up to 12, it darkens things down. So with a default of eight, we play around with that. 
the ISO is also enhancing light, but the ISO is going to create some noise, some of that fuzzy look if you play with it too much. So, so defaulted at 100, if I drop it down, in this case, it's going to get darker. So if I go to 60 from 100, we start getting some contrast darker. I like this in a way because we are still seeing some of the light coming through. Let's go down to 40. You can see that uh, milk is getting a little darker. If we go up, let's say to 130 from 100, you can see it's lightening up. We do get more contrast, uh, shadows, shading using the ISO. I like this, it looks really nice. All right, the next one is the CM uh, squared factor. I am not sure what this does. I've played around with it. If you know what it does, let me know, but I haven't really seen much of a difference. So we're gonna skip that one and go to vignetting. The vignette is pretty cool because it's going to create a halo around our picture. So as we decrease, we get this halo of white. So if you want to focus in on this on the middle of the picture, decreasing the vignette value makes a white halo our scene. And then if we go the opposite way, it's going to make a dark halo. So if we go above zero, we can get a dark halo. So maybe we want to focus in on something like, well, in this case, uh, we're focusing in on Milika's cute abdomen. Um, and it's kind of cool because it looks like it's dark and uh, we can start maybe a scene this way. So vignetting is pretty cool. You can see you can get to the extreme where you're really just kind of putting a halo around a specific area of the picture. And uh, this has a lot of potential applications. So that's pretty cool. The default is zero. So the white point scale is going to adjust light coming in and it helps with light supposedly. I don't really notice a lot of contrast when I change it. So, you know, if we go to the extreme, let's change it from zero to six. We start seeing some contrast. It looks pretty nice. If we go down, let's do negative 10. You can see that we are kind of playing with the lighting that's coming into the scene. So the burn highlights, if we start at zero and we go up, it's going to highlight the white colors in the scene. So look at the blanket. If I take the blanket and turn the burn highlights down to zero, there's not a lot of white color. But if I raise that burn highlight up, you can see that we're getting more contrast between the white in the scene and the dark in the scene. The crush black is doing the opposite. So the crush blacks is going to highlight the darker colors. So look at the fold in the sheet, for example. And as we uh, raise that from zero to one, you're gonna see a contrast in the darker colors. Pretty cool, actually. Uh, you can play around with that and get some cool effects, get some nice contrast, again, without changing your light source. Saturation is gonna change the color saturation of your picture. And as we move down, we can get some really funky, like we're turning our green. This is a uh, really good thing if you want to use black and white pictures. Uh, you can get some nice saturation. But see, we can overdo it going either direction. And uh, the saturation will enhance all of our colors. So if I put saturation at zero, we have just created a black and white picture. So cool way to take your color and make it black and white using the saturation option. All right, saturation should be defaulted at one. Now the gamma tab is going to also brighten and darken, but this becomes more unnatural. So if I drop it down from the default, you can see we kind of get this huge contrast 
but it's a cool effect as well. So depending on what you want to do, you can really change how that picture looks. If you have kind of a bleached out picture, jump onto Gamma and drop this down and you can start getting some nice contrast. Okay, so that's a quick tutorial on tone mapping. I hope this helped you. This is really cool, you should play with it. You can get some really cool effects and uh, really enhance that kind of drab look to a render. You don't have to be adjusting lights. You can go right into tone mapping and change the lighting with the tone mapping. Get it how you like it. Maybe make a halo around your picture and really get creative with your rendering. All right, that's going to just about do it for today. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a comment or two. I'd love to hear what you have to say about tone mapping. Perhaps you have a better way of doing things that you can let me know. Until next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I really appreciate all your patronage. Take care.